what's up guys so today i well i promised you guys i was going to edit uh the grooms a few of the groom dramatic portraits from last week and so i wanted to show you guys how i go through an editing session so um we're gonna start with this image here since we've already seen the black and white in the last video i thought i'd edit in color so first of all, let's look at our settings. This was shot at a rather high ISO, but it did very well. Can zoom in to the shadow areas. Um, it's not too grainy for me. So let's look over here behind him. If we wanted to, I would go down and I would work on noise reduction, but I honestly do not feel like it is necessary for this picture. Let's look over here. Maybe a little bit. Teeny, teeny bit. Okay, and then um, look over at the settings. I'll show you guys. This was shot with my 85 millimeter at f2.2. Um, I like to shoot wide open or as close to it as possible. And um, one two fifty of a second. So with the, I shot this with the D850 and with the D850, so I would, instead of using the inverse for my focal length, I have to basically double it. And then I just add a little bit to make sure I'm not shaking, which is why my shutter speed is two fiftieth of a second. So I want to explain that. So let's look at the histogram. As you can see, there is just a little bit of clipping in with his hair here for the black, um, not a big deal. And then over on this side of things, there's really nothing going on. Um, if I raised it up, you'd see a little bit in here, but it, they're not blown out. This was pretty much a perfect exposure. If I wanted to, I could raise it up a tad bit, but I'm not going to do that because I want to get through the editing process. Um, it went almost to the end here, not completely. So basically the first thing I do is check the white balance and it looks almost perfect, but a little bit cool. So, I'd go with the one picture and then I'll sync up the rest of them. Check the white balance. I go in here to put one of the grayish areas of the white and it's telling me it's going to go up to about 5800 minus 6. It's almost exactly what we have, but a little bit warmer. I think I might want to take it up just a touch warmer. Yeah, and let's take this down just a touch. Let's take that down. There we go. So that's pretty much what I would think to be perfect here with the white balance. And we can check and see where we're at here. See a skin a little bit too grayish there, much warmer here. Okay. Then the next thing I do, so another thing I want to show you is the way I shape and pose the person, I shape their face, I carve them out with the light to create shadow. And one of the reasons I do this is because if a client wants a same day slideshow, if you do the light and airy look, then you're going to have to edit pictures before you can do a same day slideshow. This, if we ran this off to a JPEG and you showed this to people um, at the reception, same day slideshow, this looks great. If we did light and airy, um, you wouldn't have hardly any contrast. So this adds the contrast. But but the way I edit, I like a higher contrast anyway. So I actually use Mastin presets, um, Mastin Labs. This is not an endorsed video. So for African American or darker skin, I like to use the Fuji Pro 400H and the 160 a lot. For Caucasian and lighter skinned people, I like to use the Portra. This Portra 160. I don't like Portra 160. I like Portra 400 the best. I would probably choose 400. So I'm going to click that. And then what I'll do is take the same image. Let's 
So then I'll just make a copy of that image and um, keep that so I can actually compare it to my own edit. Now, of course, saying all this, um, <laughs> it uh, seems to take forever, but it really does not take that long when I'm doing it. So that's back to the original image. And what I want to do is just go over here and actually add a little bit of clarity, just a teeny bit. I'm going to add a little teeny bit of contrast. Okay, a good bit of contrast. I'm going to take some blacks down a little bit more. And actually, I never, actually the first thing I usually do is check that and then enable the profile corrections. Um, so I need to go over here and do that with this one too. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is compare the two, my own edit with, uh, with what I had chosen as the preset. And I'm just going to reference and see which one I like better. Um, and I like them both. I think I'm going to go with the actual preset photo though. And I am going to see about taking the highlights down just a little bit more, even though it's not blown out. I just feel like it's a little much. So at this point, I could also convert to black and white, and I'll know that I would probably have something that I wanted, and I'd probably add the white back into black and white there to make it a little bit more, because I just love that higher contrasty look. But, um, so let's go back to... This right here. So then I would just go in if there were like really, really apparent blemishes, I would go in and take his blemishes off. The way I shoot, I usually don't have to do a whole heck of a lot of blemish work because I try to, like I said, shape with the light. So if I were going to take any out, it'd be this one right here and these little ones right here. And if it was someone with really bad skin, I would have softened that light up a little bit. Um, so now... So now I would just copy this. Everything that I wanted to copy, of course, I would copy onto it. And then I would paste it. And then I would just hit, um, well, I'm not gonna do it there, but like, okay, we have two. So I would paste it here. And then to sync the settings, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but I would hit the command click and then I would sync. So it would sync all the way down the line if I was going to use that. I could actually command click here and then sync it all the way down the line to get them all the same. And this one, I would actually probably come up just a tad bit on the exposure if I wanted to. I could. Okay, so when I'm choosing between images, I wanted to show you guys that as well. So if you can look at these images I shot, you can see his mouth here and his face in the background. The mouth looks kind of strange. This composition looks kind of strange. If it was the only one I got, then of course I would use it. I'm sure it'd be fine. But since I try to go for perfection, this is the one that I ended up choosing because you can see more of his face is much more pleasing and you can still see um, the details that he's putting on to his cufflinks. You can still see that. So that's the way I really like to shoot details. I'm not sure why this is cropped this way. Oh, probably, probably for Instagram um, since they make you do some cr crazy sh But I like to compose in camera as well. So this right here was... Oops, 
the way it comes down and then goes down. It's got this here. Uh, my composition, I always try to make sure and get everything done in camera that I possibly can. Um, so if, when I actually edit this whole thing of photos, it's going to take me five minutes or less because I just go and hit the things that I need done. So if I'm choosing between these two, I can see more of his face here. I can see more of his hand here. I think this is a better composition altogether. I would choose this picture. So, you know, if you shoot for, if you shoot to get everything right in camera, then you really don't have a lot of editing. So yeah, I try to do all of my composition, framing, um, the white balance. Now, the reason I use the dropper, I, I use auto white balance, and that's why I use the dropper and then my own eyesight to figure out what looks best. I trust my judgment on that. So this is, you know, this is a good little set. He was actually getting his tie on. And so he was dressed up to his shirt, pants, and socks. Like I asked, he he specifically wanted a picture of his shoes because he loved those shoes so much. And this is where we're at. So... And so, you know, I just start from that point where he's got his shirt, pants, and socks on, and then work my way up to posed images. And then of course I edit. Now, my workflow after I edit my images, they're all done, I've chosen my starred ones, I've done through my culling, um, I go through and make folders, so I take the images I like and put them in Pixie Set. Oh, I guess I need to be over here in my library. <laughs> so I go down to Pixie Set. I had already made a folder for this and add them for video highlights. And at this point, I would, if this was a wedding and I was done, then I would hit publish and just publish the collection. So it would go straight to Pixie Set and then they'd have their online gallery and it's really, really that simple. So anyway, guys, um, I hope this was helpful. <laughs> I'm kind of a purist, so I'm not gonna do a whole heck of a lot of editing. But if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. If you found this helpful, then go ahead and subscribe. If you, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.